Have you seen those clips in movies where a hacker goes through multiple servers to hide their identity? Today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. We're going to first build a VPN to make sure that you're hidden from your ISP. Afterwards, I'm going to show you how to be on two IPs on both sides of the earth at the same time to make it really hard to track you. We're going to find some working proxies, rank them by speed, and chain those proxies together to completely hide your identity. We're going to hop between VPNs, Tor network, and proxies to make sure our traces are very hard to track. Let's get started. Now, this video is for educational purposes only. Do not apply the techniques that you see over here to harm or perform any hacking action for which you do not have explicit permissions from the owners of the services. Let's start at home. The first entity that can listen to your internet traffic is your ISP. Your internet service provider have the power to see almost everything that you're doing. We're going to eliminate this attack service over here by encrypting the connection between your computer and a VBN server that's going to be in another country. Now from this VBN server, we're going to access the internet. So the VBN is going to provide us with an encrypted tunnel that would go from our computer over here all the way to a server on the internet. From that encrypted tunnel, our traffic will start reaching out to the whole internet. So we will be able to retrieve any website we want or do any kind of activity that we wish to do. So let's start making our VPN. I want you to go to your AWS console. If you don't have an account, they are free to make, so make sure to get one and then sign in. Now, once you've signed in, I want you to click over here on services, choose compute and go to EC2, virtual servers in the cloud. You need to choose the location where you will be running your VPN. Now, this choice, you need to put some thoughts on it and maybe search for the jurisdiction that covers the internet and the privacy in those countries. I'm going to make my VPN in Europe, Paris. So every time I make a connection, they will have to go first to Paris and then from Paris, they will access the internet. I'm going to hit launch instance over here. I'm going to call this VPN Paris. Now I want you to scroll down over here, browse more AMIs. This is simply a virtual machine that will have some service that you will be able to run automatically. I want you to search for open VBN, hit enter. Now you don't need the 10 connected devices or 25 connected devices because this will require a license that will cost a good amount of money. You can go for the free version by hitting the select button. This is bring your own license while we get two users for free and it's eligible for free tea so we can for free tier so we can actually run it for a whole year for free on Amazon. Now once you hit the continue button, you need to scroll down over here and make sure to select t2.micro. Notice this is free tier eligible. This is what you need. Then you will need to select a new key pair. This key pair will be used for you to log in to this server. So click create new key pair. Give it this key pair name. I'm gonna call it VBN Paris key and create key pair. This will download the key pair. Remember, this will land in your downloads, so make sure to move it to a folder where you actually have a terminal, or you can just run your terminal on your download. For me, I'm going to move it into this folder where I already have a terminal running. Let's see, LS, amazing. Now, once you've created a new key pair, you're ready to go. You can scroll down over here. All of this is standard. This is all the free tier eligible customers uh, gear, so don't change that. Uh, you're also not going to need more hardware than what they have in the free tier for a good VPN. Launch the instance. All right, successfully initiated. Now let's view all the instances that we have. All right, you'll see this is running. However, it's still initializing, so you need to wait a bit until it completes the checks. Now, once the checks are complete, I want you to right click on this row over here and then hit connect. Switch to this SSH client and this will give you all the commands that you will need to connect to this machine. Now let's run those commands. You'll need to first change the mod for the key. And uh, this is for the security of SSH clients. And they already give you the URL for logging into your instance. However, we can already use the one over here because it has the username at the beginning, the root. I'll just click over here, copy it, and then run this line. Yes. Of course, we got the warning. Uh, this is a common error on WSL, Windows Subsystem Linux. Uh, to overcome it, you'll have to run this command with sudo. Yes. All right, so we are now connected to our, uh, to our VBN server. Uh, we need to agree to the agreement and then leave everything on default. Just hit enter, 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 enter. All right, our username has been changed, but we still need to create a password for this server. So let's connect to it and create our password. You can use the same command. You will only need to change this root over here. Replace it with openvbnas and hit enter. Amazing, we're in. Now we need to set a password. To set a password, we have to run the command sudo 
password and give it the name of the user. Now enter a new password that you can remember. We've changed the password and this is the end of what we're going to do on a terminal. We can now easily connect using the graphical user interface over here. Um, you will get this error, your connection is not private and that's because the certificate for this server is self-signed. So don't worry about it. Proceed. So the username is OpenVPN and the password is the password that we just set. We sign in, agree to the agreement. So you get two VPN connections for free, but we still need to change some settings to make sure that this is an actually safe VPN. So I want you to hit VPN settings over here, scroll down a bit, and you will see should clients internet traffic be routed through the VPN, and you wanna set that to yes. This will route all your DNS requests. Anything that you're doing locally or using your ISP services for will be now routed to AWS and will only access the internet from that exit point that we've selected. Once you hit this yes, scroll down, save the settings, and update your running servers, otherwise the changes will not be reflected on the VPN. I want you to click on Advanced VPN over here, and then scroll down a bit to Connection Security Refresh. This will renegotiate a new TLS session, which means that anyone who's managed to hack your TLS session, although it's unlikely, has around 360 minutes to see all your traffic. So let's, let's shorter this window down, make it 120 or even 60 minutes, if you don't mind a small drop down in your connection every now and then, and hit save settings. Now, once you're done, you will need to update the running server with the new configuration. So hit this one. Now, if you noticed over here in the link, we are on the admin panel, but if we were just to remove this part and log into the server directly, we still get a user login and not an admin. However, the username and password are the same one as the one we set. So open VBN and then your password. You can hit this Windows client because I'm running on Windows. Yes, install it, run. You can open this VBN client and add a new profile. Now the URL that you want to insert here is the URL that you see on top. Click next, accept the certificate. The username is OpenVBN and the password is the password that we just... All right, now that we've set up our profile, let's connect. Give it the password. What is my IP address? Uh, 35.180. That looks like the Amazon instance that we just set up. And it is. So we're going through our Amazon technology. We're going now through Paris. They think we're over there. That's awesome. But now, is this VBN good to know that we actually have to test it for DNS leaks and for IP leaks? Let's start from the DNS. Go to dnsleaktest.com and run the extended test. This will send DNS requests through your browser to see which IPs and which countries we can detect through a DNS query. Amazing. We're all over Paris, France. There's no mention of our real IP. Let's try the IP leak test. This will run a test on your IPv4, IPv6, run a couple of DNS requests. Uh, if you see your real location over here, then there is a problem with the VPN. And luckily that's not the case. So we did a good job. All right, so now that we've encrypted our connection from our laptop or computer to a VPN, in our case in France, we can now either access the internet directly from here, or we can still direct our traffic to the Tor network first before we go on the internet. Why would we do that? Because now anyone can track us back to Amazon. We can eliminate the surface by adding more layers between us and the internet. So let's try it out. Let's connect first to Tor before we go on the internet. This is where proxy chains come into place. This will redirect our connection through proxy servers and if we look at the default configuration under etc proxy chains dot config you will see that this is by default set to tor so let's try it out before we go on a browser and start using proxy chains we actually have to run tor on our machine so sudo service uh, tor start now tor is running on our kali linux let's run a proxy chain on firefox google.com down here you can see where our traffic is going it's going first to the tor browser and then we are connecting to the link that we want we're right now in poland so now we're going from our laptop to our vpn in france and then from france we're going over to poland and that's where we are requesting everything we want on the internet which is super awesome because this guarantee has so much anonymity now if you want to change your location all you have to do is sudo service tor and instead of start you want to do restart now let's run firefox again go on google.com and right now we are in germany 
This is already adding many hops into our internet traffic and making us pretty much anonymous. However, the Tor network has been under attack for a while. Many threat actors are trying to control the exit nodes of Tor so they can see what you're accessing. If they also have control over the entry node, then they can know who you are, know what you're browsing on the internet. So that brings me to my next point. Let's try a set of proxies instead of using the Tor network. Now to get some proxies, you'll have to go to spice.one and then once you're here, I want you to click over the socks proxy list. Why only socks? Well, uh, the HTTP proxies will only forward HTTP traffic, so we cannot make any secure connection over those proxies. Once you click on this socks proxy list, you can see them ranked over here by speed. We want the least latency that we can get, so those two are a good option for us. And they are socks 5, socks 5 over more um, encryption and more security than SOX4. We will have to add those proxies to the configuration of proxy chains, uh, vim, that file. Let's comment out this one. And I'm going to add now one SOX5 proxy. There are multiple modes over here in proxy chains. So there is the dynamic chain where it will try to connect to all the proxies on your list. However, this will not guarantee any privacy because most of your proxies could be dead. If you just have one working proxy, it will connect and you will not notice the difference. Strict chain will connect through every proxy. So you can chain, for example, 10 proxies if you want. Make yourself really hard to track. The one that I really like is the round robin chain. So you do a list of proxies and then each connection go through a different proxy. So each time you're on a different location on Earth. A random chain is also pretty good, but it will be really hard to make an HTTPS request using random chain. You can set the chain length over here. I'm just going to set it to one because most of those proxies are free. They are not paid, so they do not offer a good amount of bandwidth. So I'm going to keep it to just one proxy to limit the speed degradation. All right, so one proxy it is. Let's try it out. So proxy chains, Firefox. Awesome. Let's start a new session. Go on google.com. All right. So we are in Canada now. Everything we're doing is going first from our laptop to our VPN in France, and then we're going over to Canada. But now everything is going through this one proxy, which makes us pretty vulnerable to anyone watching on this proxy. Let's make this a bit harder for them. Go back to the configuration and add another proxy in here. Colon WQ. Let's run Firefox again. I'm using round robin. So now every time I make a connection, it's going to be done through a different proxy. So for example, if I was to go on amazon.com, each connection that I am making is going once through this one and once through this proxy. This is why a round robin chain will make you pretty hard to track. It's like two different clients are connecting and getting this website. It doesn't look like you're just one client getting this website. So check this out. Our IP leaks is showing that we are on both sides of the earth. Notice this is not the IP that we're using for our VPN. This is a different IP. This is the proxy that we added over here. And we're also in Canada. How awesome is that? And now every connection that we will make from this website will go once through Canada and once through France. So we're basically on both sides of the earth at the same time. So now you can make longer chains if you want. You can add more chains. The more proxies you add, the longer your chain is, the more speed degradation you're going to see. I hope you've learned from this video how to hide yourself online and the methods that you can use to make yourself completely anonymous. Remember that all the methods that we've shown today will only make it harder to track you. Anyone who can basically listen to all those proxies or to the entry and exit nodes on Tor network can actually know who you are and can see your traffic. But since we're using a VPN, they will be redirected to our VPN exit point, which adds an extra layer of security on all ends. This will help keep your privacy and prevent trackers from tracking you as much as possible. Stay safe and see you next time.